to episode 8, so today we are going to be making a little pop-up menu and game. It, this may be split into a, a f two parts, possibly, uh, because it might be quite long. So we're just going to create a basic menu that opens when you press a key, uh, and it'll have like a few pages on it, well, two pages. Right, okay, so let's go into our add-ons and then our game mode folder. Go to code, uh, UI, and then we're going to need to make a C-sharp file and the style sheet for it. So. Make a new C sharp file, we'll call it uh, basic menu.cs. And then another file called basic menu.scss. Alright, okay, now I've created those. We'll go into our UI, uh, we'll go into our solution, and we'll open up the CS file and the SCSS. And then this uh, in the C sharp file, we will cr uh, create. We'll copy the code from the vitals panel, we can just put that in here as a starter. And rename this to basic menu. Rename that to basic menu, you can get rid of those. Uh, we can leave that open for now, uh, we can get rid of all that stuff, and then we can change this to basic menu. So we've created a class for the basic menu, uh, this is the constructor inside here, we are loading the style sheet. And we've got an empty tick where we can do some other stuff. So now that we've got that, let's add it to the hood. So we just add it there. Uh, let's save that. Okay, so we've now got that. We don't need that. So let's just uh, uh, let's just add some basic CSS for it. So we'll do basic menu uh, like that. And then what we will do, oops, wrong, wrong line. Uh, and then we'll do position. Uh, absolute width we want it to be a hundred percent I'll show you the reasoning in a second and then height 100% uh, and then we will set the background color to let me copy this so we're going to copy the background color so this is going to set the background color to RGBA value so it's going to be 30 red 30 green 30 blue uh, so that would be like uh, kind of grayish black and then we're just setting the alpha to 80% so now we've got that, if we save that uh, and go in game, we will have a little menu that covers the whole screen with uh, a, bit of, a bit of black. There we go. But obviously that's not toggleable at the moment, so what we need to do is we need to go in here. This time I'm going to do it opacity at zero. So now if we go back in game, then it will be gone. But it's not actually gone, it's just uh, opacity set to zero. Uh, and then what we're going to do is on a new line we're going to add a uh, a class, we're going to call it open and then we're going to get set opacity to 1. So the reason for this is uh, we can add and uh, take away this class here to basically uh, show and hide the menu. So if we go back in here we're going to do this in the tick or oh, actually we need to create a, new f a few variables first for it. So first one's going to be private bool. They're going to be private because they don't need to be known. It will call this is open. So they equal to false by default. And then private time since uh, last open. That will just be like that. Okay. Uh, what this one is doing, this is basically a timer. I'll show that in another episode. But it's, it will just count the time since when we uh, set or well, declare the uh, variable. And then in the tick thing, uh, we're going to do if input dot pressed and then the key we're going to do is input button you can look at these and see which ones you want but we're going to do input button dot menu this might change in the future uh, this is basically the q key it's just a default bind and then uh, another uh, thing we're going to put is last open is greater than or equal to 0.1 f so what we're doing here is we're running the if statement if uh, the menu if q if the Q button is pressed and it was last open greater than 0.1 second ago. Uh, this is basically preventing it from opening like uh, opening and closing really quickly because uh, we don't don't want it to like uh, take on multiple clicks at once if it's uh, if it does that. So then we'll set is open equal to not is open. So this will basically if it is open then it'll close it and if it's open then it'll, if it's closed then it'll open it and do it last open equals zero. 
then here it's basically saying that it's been that it's been toggled so don't do anything for another point one of a second and then finally we do set class open and then is open so we are setting that class that we created uh, to uh, we're enabling it uh, if the variable is open is true and then deciding it if it's false so now if we press that then we could we have a little menu so we press Q it goes away uh, and just toggles uh, what we can do for this uh, tutorial is we can just here we can just do is open equals true so you can just uh, enable this uh, so it will always be there even if you save stuff because you don't want it to because it will refresh the menu whenever we we save stuff so it'll get uh, so it'll be removed so you have to press Q again so we just want it to be constantly open and then you can just like delete that comment out to uh, make it a normal again so you can normally close it and open it so let's just set that to true alright so now we can actually do the menu stuff so let's do some f some fancy stuff first so below opacity we're going to do transition if we could do that transition uh, all 0.1 s uh, is out so this is going to make any transitions uh, or any like changes in opacity ease in and ease out so now that we've set that if we press q oh if we, we should probably get rid of this for now so we can actually still test it so you see it fades in and out uh, and you can change this value here to change how long it takes and then another thing we can add is transform uh, scale uh, 1.05 so what this will do and then here we're going to set it to 1 so this is just a little fancy effect so it will make it so that it's bigger uh, before fading in so while it's closed it'll be big and then while it's when it opens it'll be smaller so this will fade in so it'll kind of like feel like it like zooms in uh, it will it's you can't really tell uh, because it's just a solid black background that always fills the screen but when we add something in the center you'll be able to notice uh, and then another thing we want uh, here is pointer events all this will enable the mouse so if we go in game now we have the clicker and then we'll close it we don't uh, and then uh, we're going to do some little effects going to add a blur so backdrop filter I cannot spell backdrop filter, then just do blur 10 pixels. You can change that, to, you can change this value to make it uh, more blurred or less blurred. So if you go in game, uh, you see you have a bit of a blur now. And uh, finally, we can add just uh, two other things, which is justify content center and align items center. Uh, what these are going to do is it's going to men uh, it's going to center uh, all of the children to like the center of the screen so when we add the actual menu it will be in the center then finally we're going to do font family uh, roboto you can change this to whatever you want this is just going to set all our fonts to uh, that font so whenever we use any text right okay now that's done let's add a quick let's add a class for the menu this is going to be the panel in the actual center of the screen so let's set that. So set the width to 60%, uh, height to 60%, and then background color. We could just copy this, uh, go to that, change it to our RGB value, and we'll put it to 33, 33, 33. And then we'll do a box shadow, and that's going to be 0, 0, 5 pixel black. So that's going to be a box shadow with uh, no X or Y offset. It's going to be 5 pixel of the size and the color is going to be black. So, and it will, we don't need to send, we're going to, don't need to adjust the position because it will already be in the center. So let's actually add that panel now. So here we are going to do panel, menu panel equals add dot panel. Then the class is going to be uh, menu. We do that let's let's just get that back i know we can actually use uh, we can actually show the thing off now actually show that cool transition so you see it kind of zooms in and we've got a little menu in the center now this is where we'll actually put all our buttons or whatever we're doing on so that kind of does a nice little fade in effect and now we can enable that because we don't really need to close that anymore so now every time we tap in it'll just be like that uh, and then what we could do now is we can actually start adding uh, the panels for uh, navigation stuff so we'll start by doing a page system and for that we are going to need a navigation panel so let's do private 
panel and navigation panel. The reason we're defining this as a variable up here is because we want to, uh, we're going to need to change up some other things. Uh, we're going to need to edit it in, in some other functions, not just this function or method. So that would just be uh, it's set to a menu panel. So we're going to add a panel to the menu panel and we'll just call this nav bar. So let's go define the CSS, SCSS for that, or CSS. So we'll create a new class, call it nav bar. And then that's just going to, we'll just copy this background color and we'll set that to 45, just a little bit lighter. A flex direction column and then padding 10 pixels. So what we're doing here, set the background color, flex direction column is going to mean that all of the children are going to go in a column rather than in a row. So it will be like one on each line rather than one, all of them uh, being on the same line. Then padding is just going to add a little bit of spacing around the actual children. So now if we go again, we have a little nav bar, but we've not set the width because we'll just do, uh, let the children set the width. So back into the basic menu. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually have to start on the page system before we do the buttons or anything. So uh, to do that, we are going to create uh, two new variables. We're going to create a list. Uh, and it's going to... Oh, uh, we need to uh, import a uh, system. We need to imp allow us to, act to actually allow us to use lists. We need to do si um, using systems dot collection dot generic, and now we can use lists because that's the namespace they come from. And then the list is just going to contain all the panels. Uh, so we're going to use the the actual uh, type is going to be a tuple with uh, just two panels in it. So the first panel would be the actual page. Then the second panel will be the button because we need to change the button style, like whenever it's activated, to uh, show that it's. It would like change the button to red or whatever to show that it's active, and that'll just be. Oh, we need to set the name, and that'll be pages, and then equal to new. So we're creating a new list. Then the last uh, variable that we're going to create is a private int active page. We'll set that equal to minus one. I'll just say why in a second. So uh, we're just creating a variable called active page, and this is going to be set to uh, the position of whatever page is active was it within this list. And we're setting it to minus one because we don't want it. We want it to start as uh, something that's not in the list, so that we can uh, check and update the page. Okay, so let's start on the page. So we'll do panel main area equals menu panel dot add uh, dot panel main. Oh main area so we're basically creating a panel for this area that's not the nav bar so basically just the rest of the panel and then that's sort of comment here to say they were now moving on to the pages so now we can just add a few pages to do uh, page uh, panel home page equals main area so that's this one we just created uh, we'll just copy that and then we'll set the class to page uh, let's create two pages we'll create uh, Oh, we'll actually add a label to that to show it working. So we'll do add dot label. Uh, we'll just say home page, put whatever you want here. We're just using this to kind of show the actual page system off. And we can do the same for this page. We'll call this a uh, commands page. And then, yeah, we can just call that commands as well. So now if we save that, we should see some random text here. Uh, but obviously this isn't very, that's just kind of showing that it's working and they're both displayed at one uh, at the same time at the moment because we've not actually added the page system yet. So uh, let's get started on the CSS for the main area first. So this, this is pretty quick, it's just main area, uh, it's going to just be flex grow one. So let's, and then let's add a background color to show it working red so let's get rid of that flex grow so if you save that uh, here we'll just see that the the main area only covers this bit because it only covers the content of its children if we had flex grow one now it's going to cover the whole area so it's basically growing the width to fit the whole area that it is allowed so we can get rid of that but we can see that that works and then the last one we need to add is a class for the page or page any page so width is we just want it to fill the parents so the width and height to 100%. Uh, position is going to be absolute. We don't want the position to be affected by uh, the other pages. And then opacity is going to be by default. Like with the menu, it's going to be by default zero. 
and then we'll just have a, a, a class for being active uh, opacity one uh, the reason why I'm adding this and sign by the way is because it's part of this uh, you know you're adding the class to the parent so you want to put that and sign if it's just a generic class then you can just put not put the and sign but it's you're adding a class to that parent so you do that okay so we've got opacity one for active uh, obviously right now they will no longer show so that's we're getting there so back into the c sharp file